Today we are covering a movie called Jug Face. Subscribe to the channel to show support. In the woods of an isolated cult-like community, Ada plays a game of hide and seek with her brother Jessaby. She attempts to outrun him, but he manages to catch her and pins her down. As Jessaby urges Ada to give up, she pleads with him to avoid the nearby hole. Eventually, Ada convinces Jessaby to release her, and they both retreat behind a tree, where they make love. Well, this is another sweet home Alabama movie. Elsewhere, Dawai shapes a clay face jug. After placing it in the oven, he hears a mysterious call from the pit. Back at their home, the community gathers, and Bodhi, a boy from another family, informs Ada that they are to be married. Uncertain, Ada requests time to pray by the pit, and assures everyone she'll be back for dinner. Instead, she visits Dawai's home and uses red paint to pretend she's on her period. Ada sneaks away to wash her hands in the river, but as she does, she spots the reflection of a strange creature lurking behind her. Ada returns to Dawai's home, surprising him. She reveals that her father, Sustin, has agreed to her marriage with Bodhi. When Dawai offers to play some music, Ada declines, saying she must get home before dark. While Dawai isn't looking, Ada discovers a jug in the oven bearing her face. This symbolizes that she's chosen to be sacrificed to the pit creature. Alarmed, she hides the jug by burying it. Back home, Ada informs her mother Loris that everyone will attend dinner except Dawai, who's undecided. Ada tries to use her period as an excuse for her behavior, but Loris checks her ass because she knows that's not a valid excuse. During dinner preparations, Jessaby learns about Bodhi's proposal from their father. That night, their father expresses gratitude to the pit for their good fortune. Although Jessaby appears unhappy, he congratulates Bodhi, remarking he's chosen a good wife. I'm sure Jessaby would rather be the one marrying his own sister. The evening proceeds with celebratory music and dancing. Later, Dawai spends time with the children. He encounters Jessaby, who taunts him before pulling Ada aside. Distressed, Jessaby warns Ada about a virginity test, urging her to pin their love affair on someone other than him. The mothers gather to discuss Ada's upcoming test. With Loris confident in her daughter's innocence, the mother is about to be in for a rude awakening. At home, Loris questions Ada about Jessaby's earlier distress. Ada deflects suggesting Jessaby is just wary of Bodhi joining their family. Visiting her grandfather's trailer, Ada brings him food and shares her impending marriage to Bodhi. She also admits she's the next chosen sacrifice, represented by the jug face. She wonders why she confided in him. The following day, while driving with Ada, Sistan accidentally hits a possum. Ada broaches the subject of declining the marriage. However, Sistan emphasizes that her primary duty is to bear children. They later stop at a store where Sistan sells goods. Ada sneaks a pregnancy test into her bag. Back home, the test confirms she's pregnant, a good old incestuous baby. While Ada and Ilan launder clothes by the river, Dawai searches for the missing jug. Suddenly, a creature confronts Ada, warning her that the pit is aware of her actions. Ada collapses, having a vision of Ilan being attacked by the pit monster. She's jolted awake by Ilan's mother's screams. Rushing to the pit's edge, they find Ilan's mutilated body. The mother blows a horn to alert the community. The community questions Ada and Dawai about the missing jug face. Dawai denies having made one. Sistan asks the villagers to gather at his home after sunset. During the meeting, Dawai explains that he sometimes acts under the influence of the pit when crafting jug faces, but is adamant that he hasn't made one recently. As everyone waits, a fearful Dawai rummages through his home, searching for the jug. He considers ending his life if the jug remains lost. Just then, there's a knock at the door it's Ada. Inside, Ada spots a jug portraying a baby. She confronts Dawai about keeping it hidden. He replies that no one in the village is currently pregnant. When Dawai expresses his uncertainty about the pit's message, Ada reminds him of the pit's unerring past guidance. Back home, Ada tells Loris she'd been in the woods, trying to head to bed. Loris insists on confirming whether Ada is menstruating. Ada resists, so Loris uses a cigarette to burn her thigh, coercing Ada into revealing herself. Discovering Ada is no longer a virgin, Loris suspects Dawai popped her cherry. She burns Ada's hands, demanding the truth. Ada however claims she knuckled herself and popped her own cherry. Sistin comforts Ada, assuring her of a happy future with Bodhi. Jessaby enters, initially dismissive of Ada's concerns, but is taken aback when she reveals her pregnancy. The next morning, Dawai unveils a jug face bearing Bodhi's likeness. Sistin reminds everyone of the honor in being chosen by the pit. Resigned, Bodhi kneels, presenting his neck for Sistin's blade. As the moment approaches, Bodhi calls out to his mother, seeking her reassurance. Distressed, Ada rushes to her grandfather's trailer. She finds him stuck in a bucket to empty his bowels. Ada helps him and empties it outside, that must have been rancid. Unexpectedly, a creature from the pit appears, identifying itself as one of the shunned. It warns Ada to hold her actions. Despite Ada's denials, the creature reveals that her grandfather once concealed a jug face, causing suffering. 
The creature suggests she must be sacrificed to set things right. Ada uncovers the hidden jug face and stashes it near a tree. At Dawai's home, finding him inebriated, she further conceals the jug with leaves. On her way home, Jessaby intercepts her, asking about Sistan's whereabouts due to his ailment. Sistan believes in the pit's healing properties, claiming it saved them from disease in the past. Sistan then leads Jessaby to the pit, instructing him to disrobe and use the pit's water for healing. Overwhelmed, Ada attempts to return to Dawai but is hampered by unsettling visions. The water in the pit begins to churn violently, alarming Jessaby. As Sistan reaches to help, Jessaby is pulled under. Witnessing this, Ada collapses. Sistan sounds an alarm with the horn. Dawai comforts a distraught Ada, who feels responsible for Jessaby's fate. She's probably also sad AF now that she won't be able to touch her brother's eggplant. Sistan confides in Loris, expressing a sense that things are falling apart. Ada reveals to Dawai that the pit desires both her and her unborn child. Suddenly, Sistan and Loris confront them. Sistan assaults Dawai, and, aided by Bodhi's parents, pressures him into confessing. Dawai admits he recreated a lost jug face from memory. As punishment, Sistan banishes Dawai to the forest. Resigned, Dawai exchanges a somber look with Ada. Later, Ada visits her grandfather, bidding him a heartfelt farewell, aware she may not see him again. By dawn, she resolves to rescue Dawai, and they plan their escape. While on the road, Ada experiences morning sickness. She discards the jug bearing her likeness into the bushes. They eventually hitch a ride to a town store. Ada requests to meet the store owner, who used to buy goods from Sistan. Attempting to sell him moonshine, she faces his skepticism. She pleads, mentioning her illness and Sistan's disbelief in her. Ultimately, the store owner relents and purchases the moonshine. After Dawai dozes off, the cashier assists Ada. She mentions knowing an OBGYN, having noticed Ada stealing the pregnancy test from earlier. Suddenly, Ada experiences a vision of Bodhi's mother being taken by the pit creature. Snapping back to reality, Ada confides in the cashier about the dangers they face in their community. The cashier promises to ensure they receive payment before leaving. Outside, the cashier spots her father. Ending a phone call, he warns her against getting involved with the townsfolk. Fearing they've been betrayed, Ada urges Dawai to leave. As the store owner speaks with Sistan outside, Ada and Dawai attempt to hide. However, Bodhi's father discovers them and points a gun at them. They're taken back to their community, where Loris confronts Ada, slapping her into next week. Despite Ada's protests of innocence regarding any relationship with Dawai, Loris remains unconvinced. Trust me, Mama, you don't want to know the real tea. Both Ada and Dawai are then tied up and whipped as punishment. Later, Loris tends to Ada's injuries. Ada reveals that Sustan plans to make a difficult decision for the community's benefit. Soon, Loris discovers Ada having a miscarriage. In another room, Sistan and Loris discuss Ada's situation, with Loris suspecting Dawai is the father of Ada's child. However, Sustan has other suspicions. In the living room, Loris confronts Ada about her involvement with Dawai. Ada denies this, finally confessing she was in love with Jessaby and that the baby was his all along. Both parents are devastated by this revelation. In her anger, Loris mentions they had planned a union between Ada and Corba, but now, due to Ada's actions, the arrangement might be cancelled. Loris locks Ada in a room. Sistan visits the pit while Ada escapes through a window, seeking information from her grandfather about the outcast boy. The boy appears, urging Ada to do what's necessary. As this happens, Sistan questions Dawai about his relationship with Ada. Dawai denies any involvement and learns of Ada's miscarriage. Suddenly, the boy warns Ada of the pit's awakening. Tragically, the pit claims Sistan's life. The alarm horn sounds, drawing the community to the pit. Upon discovering her husband's fate, Loris moves to end Dawai. Ada steps forward, admitting she hid her jug face. Ada shows Loris where she hid it, handing it over to Bodhi's father. An infuriated Loris strikes Ada, knocking her down, and orders that she be tied up alongside Dawai. Ada expresses regret to Dawai, who empathizes with her, saying he too would have tried to save his child. That night, the outcast boy awakens them, conveying a message from their grandfather. Ada needs to leave. Ada however insists on staying if it means Dawai can go free. Dawai is deeply concerned for Ada, urges her to escape, but she refuses. Tearfully, Dawai admits he loves her. Ada acknowledges his feelings with a nod. Boy just got friend-zoned. The next morning, as the villagers gather by the pit, Ada steps forward. She apologizes to the community for the chaos she brought. As the ceremony commences, Bodhi's father ends Ada's life. Distraught, Dawai finds it hard to watch. Afterwards, Dawai is released. He lights a candle in honor of Ada, placing it by her jug face at his home. Overwhelmed, he sits and turns his gaze away. What is the lesson of the movie? Never worship holes, even if that hole has healing liquid. What did you guys think of this movie? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.